In this video, I'm not going to do any Python. I'm just going to talk about sort of why you would use web scrapers and kind of what the use cases are. So I'm going to start with an example here. I've actually made this HTML. Uh, it's called secretcompany.html. If you want to look at it, you can look at it at my GitHub, secret HTML, uh, secretemployer.html, right? But essentially, if we look at this and we inspect the code, we can see there's a bunch of divs with the class employee. And if we expand that, each employee's got a first name, last name, and a salary, right? Now, it's not very obvious from my layout because I've just made this HTML really fast um, what all this information is. But for whatever reason, for secret company, this is essential information. And for some stupid reason, they've got it all on a HTML file, right? Now, realistically, if I was an employee, I'd just copy and paste these four details and, you know, put the uh, first name, last name and salary, wherever they need to be put. But if this was like a HTML file that for some stupid reason contained a thousand employees, it'd be faster to use find all on the div class of employee and then use every one of these three div classes and, you know, do something with each of these first, last names and salaries, right? And record that information and put it wherever I want and do whatever I want with it there, right? So that is a use case. That is a reason why uh, you might use, for example, um, web scrapers, particularly uh, beautiful soup, right? Another is, you know, you've got this quotes to scrape site, or you might have like a an image board or something like that, or like a site that's got loads of links, like loads of cool links. And instead of you having a, you know, bookmark that site and reuse that site a million times, you just want to get all of those links. That's not harming anyone, you know, that's a good idea. Or it might be useful to another company uh, for them to see the links. Maybe you're going to look for the top hundred companies in the world and you're going to get a link of every single one of those companies websites right and that could be useful to you in the future for reasons who knows right there's other reasons you might want to use a web scraper okay let's say that you're helping out someone who's got a forum or something like facebook like a social media site right and there's loads of comments from users and of course they've probably got a database and all the users and all the comments but they might want to look at every single comment uh, that has the word secret in it right and they might want to see if these comments have any these comments have any kind of i don't know relation to each other if there's any similarities in the way that people use words when they use the word secret in a comment yeah there's all kinds of things they might want to do with their data, which they can't do via their own database for whatever reason. They can only do it from scraping their own website, right? So those are a few use cases and a few reasons why you might want to use um, a web scraper like Beautiful Soup. Other reasons are actually kind of illegal. So, for example, here's Chimilo. I don't know what it is. I just typed in forum and I think it was the first thing that came up. No idea what it is. Maybe, for example, I want to go in here and I want to look at all these different users, usernames, and get all the comments and try and find out where they live. Now, that is possibly illegal. I'd imagine it probably is. And also probably highly immoral. I mean, why do you want to dox these users? Even if it's just to spam them, you know. This isn't information they're giving out. They're coming to these forums to be anonymous. They're getting their own anonymous usernames. You de-anonymizing them is a bit nefarious, right? So there's also bad reasons why people use uh, these kind of um, web scrapers, right? There's also things like, let's say you've got Wikipedia, yeah? And you want to look at like a link on Wikipedia. And so we go to Blandford Forum, a town in England, okay? And we want to get all the links in the, I don't know, there's no see also section, so not that. Let's say we want to get all the links in the references section, right? Because we want to we want to check every single reference. You know, we're doing some weird science project and we can't be bothered, you know, getting them all right now. So we're just going to get the links and we'll just we'll look at it all later. Right. We'll look at it all later. And we're archiving loads and loads of links from several different Wikipedia pages for some giant research project. Right. That's a legitimate use as well of something like um 
beautiful soup web scrapers, right? There are a few things to consider though when using beautiful soup. So for example, if we look at this web page here and we inspect this um, header apparently, it's got an ID of first heading, right? Now let's look at Blanford Forum. Does this also have the same ID? Let's have a look. So it does have the same ID as first heading. So we can reasonably assume that there's probably a lot of these Wikipedia articles that all have the same H1 header, right? And so we can probably assume that we'll make a, a, like a, a web scraper that gets all of these headers for lots and lots of different Wikipedia pages because, yeah, we just want to do that, right? A few problems with this. Uh, the first is... What if Wikipedia change all of their pages and they just do a generic thing where they say for h1 where h1.class equals uh, first header da -da -da -da, h1.class now equals something else, right? This is an example. That's probably isn't real code. I mean, it maybe is in some weird language. Well, then when you go to run your web scraper again, it's not going to work because this first header, first heading uh, H1 ID in class no longer exists. So you can't scrape it because it's not there, right? So this is a problem that you can, can and will run into often with web scrapers. In fact, I've made a bunch of web scrapers for some projects uh, back when I didn't really know how to code, to be honest. And half of them don't work because, um, yeah, people change their websites quite frequently. IDs, classes uh, get changed. People use different tags instead of using the tags they were using before. So, you know, websites change. Uh, they're not static, they're dynamic. And so when the, the structure of a website changes, sometimes that's the end of your scraper. Another thing is, you're going to be taking up a lot of server space, pinging every single article, requesting every single uh, article in Wikipedia, and trying to get the header name, right? There's actually archives, you know, of Wikipedia, so you don't need to um, use a web scraper to get this stuff. You can actually use the archives for this kind of stuff. So one thing you should think about before using a web scraper is, do I need a web scraper? Okay. Now, there's another cool thing on the internet that exists, and a cool technology called an API, right? And what is an API? An application programming interface. So let's say we want to get financial information or something from like a finance exchange, and we're thinking, hey, I know how to use Python. I'll just make a little web scraper, right? Well, you know, you're going to be maybe looking at 10, 20,000, 300,000 pages to find out all this crazy information. It's going to take a long time. Um, if you're using a web scraper, it might be illegal because you're not allowed to access that without their permission. And it, it might get blocked because you're sending too many requests too fast on the same IP. They might just think, say, no, you're not getting this information. But they might have an API. And what an API is, is it's just a web address. Um, that you use in an application or a program and it gives you certain information. So this financial company might have an API that just gives you all the financial information you're after, right? So sometimes it's not worth using uh, these web scrapers. That's all I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to kind of show you like some of the uses, reasons why and why you wouldn't use them as well, you know, and alternatives. Anyway, right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. This concludes the Beautiful Soup tutorial. I know it was all very short, but there isn't much to Beautiful Soup. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed.